This right here is my new desktop. I know, you're thinking, God bless, how often do you switch desktops, Titus? And I'm like, well, it depends on my week. This week, I've been a little bit under the weather, and I was like, let's just blow something up, because that's what I'm known for. So let's get right over here. I want to start showing you all the little different things nooks and crannies of this new window manager using Wayland, which you might be thinking, wait a second, did you just say Wayland? Because Wayland you don't really like. And I'm like, yep, yep, that's true. I've talked bad about it in the past. And this is also going to be Arch, which, by the way, you get your t-shirts at cttstore.com. Uh, you can use really well and get the bleeding edge is what I needed to make all this possible. So that's why I've done it this way, and the whole reason what turned me on was the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck's Arch-based, it's an immutable file system, but the way it does game scope and it's compositing, it's really magical. And I was really impressed with the Steam team and what they are able to do with the desktop, but it's meant for this. So just taking like Hollow OS, ISO, or uh, you know the Steam iteration and putting it on hardware, it just was not uh, an experience I liked. So I was like, okay, let's make an experience I do like using more of that philosophy. So if you're not familiar with tiling window managers, well, I usually just kind of map a whole bunch of keys. You can throw these around. You can go full screen with them. You can do a lot of different really neat stuff. It's a dynamic way of being productive, basically, with your environment. You have access to a bunch of different workspaces, as you see up at the top. And probably my favorite feature here, because I do a lot of Windows content, well, I just hit a hotkey. Let's give it a second. Let's just sit here, and you'll notice a window pops up. In the background, I created a script that automatically launches a VM. Now, it's not just any VM, it's a specialized VM. And in that VM, I'm passing through my GPU, my hard drive, and also a USB card. So it's essentially a full-blown Windows box with zero compromises. The only thing that's a little bit virtualized in this one is the CPU. I'm only cutting basically my CPU in half. Uh, or a little bit more than half. I'm giving Windows about two-thirds my CPU. So I could uh, make this a little bit faster if I wanted, or if I saw some sacrifices, I could just upgrade my CPU and it'd be just as fast as what people natively run. So this is using Looking Glass. I go full screen with it, and now no one knows I'm in Linux. But guess what? I am. Kind of, uh, kind of cool. So that's what's going on here and if you just want to see the device manager real fast we'll just click device manager and you'll notice hey there's my display adapters i have the usb so i can directly plug stuff in the usb is passed through which means if i plug stuff in there it's not registered in linux but it is registered in windows uh, very cool setup but very complicated and i may make a video sometime in the future however if you want to check it out now I would say check out Hikari Knight's quick pass through as that was essential for getting this working pretty fast and seamlessly. He did such a great job on that project. Shout out to him. But having said that, I'm done with Windows and I just want to shut it down, come back into my environment. Let's see how that looks. Uh, this should shut down and boom, there we go. You don't even notice I was running a VM, don't even notice I was in Windows, and now I'm back in Linux. So now I have all that kind of right on my desktop, and the cool thing about this, uh, besides the dynamic window management and stuff, is it is using Wayland, so I don't have any screen tearing and other things, but there's also the downside to it. It's really new, and there's a lot of tools that I'm used to using uh, when it comes to X Xorg versus Wayland, there's, you pretty much have to relearn it all. So like instead of X uh, Randar, you'd have WL Randar. And that kind of gives you all the outputs of your cards. Uh, instead of using Grub, I, I chose to do System D boot. I was like, hey, if I'm gonna just do everything, I just wanna grab the newest of everything, let's just relearn it all. And System D boot, I needed a whole bunch of kernel arguments. So I had to add that in here. So I actually added it into the loader's entry file uh, this is actually Arch. I don't know why the defaults like Linux.conf. Technically, I probably should rename that Arch underscore Linux.conf just to make it a little easier, but it doesn't matter 
for today's video. This is kind of what I did and adding a bunch of customization to it using systemd boot was fun as well. But the problems didn't start stop there. So what I did for the base of this was first off, I'm using hyper WM or, or hyper land uh, is their Wayland implementation based on WL roots, which is pretty cool. And their stock setting is actually pretty nice looking. I mean, this right here, I kind of like just the stock, which is nice, but I kind of wanted something a little bit different, a little bit more. So I ended up taking some dot files from a live stream I did. I did a four and a half hour live stream, kind of just mucking around. I was a little sick, so during that live stream, it's a little incoherent. But if you want to watch all of it, me fumbling around in the dark, well, that's a fun watch <laughs> for those masochists out there. Uh, but I took Linux Mobile's Hyperland dash dots, and this right here is kind of what I ended up basing my operating system. Now, I think he's from Lithuania or something like that. So there was some language settings I had to change, uh, some older configurations that didn't quite make it. So, of course, I kind of made my own project and started mapping out more of the inconsistencies with this to make it even better. So the first thing was first switching to Yay. I'm a big fan of Yay. I know some people that are huge into Rust are already bashing me in the comments going, Yay's written in Go. It's a language for fill in the bad word here. And, and then, uh, so I, I still use Yay for my Arch instances. Packages, I'm still using all of this. Uh, I kind of started filling out all the dependency packages. So what I end up doing is just doing an Arch install using Arch Linux's installer, which has actually gotten really good. It's been a while since I've used it. And then I just did Sway as a desktop base with no extra packages, and it works great. I may run a script or make this fully automated in the future, depending on how this video is received. And then uh, there's a couple packages I noticed did not work using the repo packages. I had to build it from source basically. Using AUR makes it super simple, so it doesn't really matter. But I was using SDDM Git as my shutdown times were really delaying a long time, but switching to SDDM Git fixed that. Other issues on my laptop, because I also did this on my laptop, uh, SDDM was having issues with the login. I was actually doing Control Alt F7, Control Alt F1, Control Alt F2, switching between my TTYs until I could get a login prompt. SDDM, for whatever reason, even though it was a graphical target uh, for my system D, it just wasn't pulling up my display manager. So to fix that, I ended up just doing an auto login, which if you've never done an auto login before, let's just clear this. Basically what I'm doing is just going to sddm.conf and it's just three lines. It's just auto login, user Titus, and then the session, which is Hyperland is what this looks like. Just fill in your username. You can use this file and off you go. Uh, the other thing you have to do is add yourself to the auto login group, which is not there by default, so you would just do group add auto login, it would add the group, or you'd have to do sudo group add auto login, and you would be good, and then just make sure to chmod uh, your user, you depend uh, your user to auto login Titus like that, and that would add the auto login to your user. With that, your system would just boot directly up, and it would work really fast. Speaking of fast, let's actually uh, see what the shutdown looks like on this guy, right? Let's just got this little menu. I got to change the colors around. This is still Linux Mobile's customization as I stole his dot files. Uh, so I'm going to change some of the uh, coloring, but that's okay. Let's hit reboot. Let's go ahead and time it. I'm going to just talk for a second. I want you to see how long this takes on the boot because I think it only takes like five seconds or so. Oh, see, I could actually remove my system D timeout, maybe save a second or two there, and I should be pretty much on my desktop. Pretty fast. I could even shave off a couple seconds to make it even faster. To do that, I'm just going to go sudo vim, and you could use nano gedit, whatever editor you want to use here. You don't have to use vim. Uh, boot, and then I think we need loader, loader.conf. And see, there's three seconds there we were actually waiting. So instead of doing that, let's uh, let's do it one more second, one more time here. 
We're going to reboot again, but this time we don't have the three second timeout. There was the BIOS beep. So here we go. Let's see if it shaves off that two or three seconds we were waiting. Yeah, maybe. Uh, let's see. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, yeah, yeah. So pretty cool. Uh, I like that. Let's uh, switch our background. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it looks, it looks slick. Pull up our browser. Yeah, there we go. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I just want to open windows all day long and then move them around. Oh, let's go full screen with that. Let's switch to a different one. Let's launch GIMP. Oh, I don't even have GIMP installed. Ah, fail. Let's install GIMP. I'm just telling you, it's really amazing. It's been a while since I've been on the bleeding edge, and oh, it, just, it, it just is so darn fast compared to what it was, and my hardware is not even that good. That's the beauty of all this. I'm only on a 5600X here. That is kind of insane. Uh, I, I got to tell you, the future of Linux looks kind of insane and super bright. And there's so much you can do with it that it's just mind blowing. So I just kind of want to walk you through the first iterations of my new desktop, uh, kind of show you where the project is. If you want to fiddle around with it or you go, hey, Titus, you're an idiot. Uh, you should be using this package instead of this package on Wayland. I'd appreciate it because I love those comments. It makes me better, makes these videos better. And with that, let me know your thoughts down below and I'll see you in the next one.